What's that, Ruby? I just quizzing. <laughs> codes. Quizzing on what? Quizzing on codes. School codes? Maybe. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> It is 9 o'clock. It's good to have everyone here. Let me give Mom a call. She's going to try to listen. Let me give her. All right, Mom just answered, so she's going to try to listen this morning. It's good to have everyone here. It, uh, it's a beautiful Lord's Day morning, February 2nd. It's hard to believe we're already into February. We have a good crowd here. Well, I say good. It's me and Ruby, Ben, Larry, and Mike, Kathy, and Earl. But uh, more will roll in. I was doing that for Mom. She always wonders who's here. So, uh, But uh, Mom's still in the hospital. She's in rehab. Hasn't been doing the best the last couple of days. It's very, very weak. But she had some really good days this week as well. So, And uh, they'll determine this week whether or not she's ready to come home. And uh, if not, she'll be able to stay for more rehab or whatever she needs. Continue to remember others as well. Shirley hasn't been able to be with us in quite a time. A lot of breathing issues. Really having problems with that. Uh, continue... Uh, to remember any others uh, I meant to get a list up but I haven't got it ready yet for hadn't done it yet for the everybody just to see makes it a little easier uh, Vicki goes for an EMG I think it's called on both arms on Wednesday at Vanderbilt she's had it done for so it's a very painful process they're probably going to, have to remove the plate in her neck and replace it with another one so she's very really dreading all that and so keep her in mind uh, neighbors and friends of uh of sharon uh, the girl on their bus that uh, archie manning bad with cancer continue to remember that family and his wife taking care of him uh, i think judy is her name anybody else that we need to mention if there is nothing else larry's going to lead us in singing this morning so we'll turn it over to him Our first song uh, this morning will be number 283. <clears throat> 283. We'll sing the first and last stanza of 283. <clears throat> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream. Flows from Calvary's mountain and the cross, and the cross be my glory ever till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross, O Lamb of God. Bring his seeds before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows o'er me. And the cross, and the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find. Rest beyond the river. <clears throat> Our song before the prayer this morning will be number 303. 303. <clears throat> we'll sing the first, second, and last stanza, and after the same of this song, we'll ask Ben to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> first, second, last, and then Ben lead us in prayer. <clears throat> I have a home prepared for the saints of God, just over in the glory line. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory line. 
Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land, I am on my way to those mansions fair. Just over in the glory land, there to sing God's praise and His glory share. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land, with the blood war strong I will shout and sing. Just over in the glory land, glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us. We ask that you forgive us, forgive us of our sins. Please be with our sake who cannot be here today. Please protect us and guide us as we continue through our worship today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> Number three eighty seven. <clears throat> three eighty seven. <clears throat> We're saying all three stanzas. Three eighty seven. <clears throat> Down at the cross where my Savior died, and were full cleansing from sin, I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. To his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Number 525. <clears throat> we 
were saying the first, second, last dance of number 525 before classes. <clears throat> If a walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the day. And I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile of the way. If for Christ I proclaim the glad story, if I seek for his sheep gone astray, I am sure he will show me his glory when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the There are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile of the way. And if here I have earnestly striven and have tried all his will to obey, twill enhance all the rapture of heaven when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the day. And I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile of the way. Okay, it looks like our only class this morning. If you will, turn to Second Peter chapter... One, cha I'm sorry, Second Peter chapter two, verse one is going to be it this morning. Second Peter two, verse one. He's talking about false teachers in this chapter, and. says, but there were false prophets. Well, we closed out last week talking about the prophecies. And that prophecies came not by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's where we closed out last week. So let's begin new material today, 2 Peter 2, 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. This is talking about, you know, the time past. If you go back, the time he's talking about were, was during the Old Testament and the prophets of old. That they were moved by the Holy Spirit. But he said there were also, of course, false prophets. People who taught things that they should not. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So he goes into the past, saying that there's false teachers. He goes into the future, saying that there will be false teachers among you. 
just teaching things that are wrong. They may even think they're teaching right. But to think you're right doesn't make it right. We've given so many examples of this before, and uh, you could give many, but just like next door at Walgreens, literally right here in, you know, it's uh, you literally can almost touch each building here. They're so close. Not quite, but almost. But if you go in... And even a trained pharmacist gives you the wrong medicine. I know Sandy being a nurse, you have to make sure you give the right medicine to the right patient. That's very important. And the right dosage. I've noticed with mom this week that it takes them a long time once they bring the medicine card around. They pull up the patient's record on the screen and, and they scan with a barcode to scan her literally her uh, tag on her wrist and then they'll scan the medicines sandy i don't know but i would say in this day and time the computer software helps match if they were to scan the wrong thing it probably flag up that patient doesn't take this or it's going to conflict with you know oh, and so the computers really help to avoid conflicts but mistakes can be made even if it's a really good pharmacist they could well this just happened in the last five or six months. They handed us medicine for mom over the counter. I mean, we bought not over the counter medicine, but prescription. It's for, it for some man that lived elsewhere in Hart County. They gave us his medicine. I don't know what it was for, but it could have been very destructive for mom and destructive for him not using it. So even those who teach and do well, trying to do well, can say false things. You need to make sure that you've got the truth of anything like medicines, but even more so the Word of God, because it determines your eternal soul. But there were false prophets also among the people, even there's, there shall be false teachers among you. So he's warning there are going to be false teachers among us, who privately, says secretly in the New King James, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying that the Lord bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There's many ways teaching can be false, but this was one example. They would deny the Lord. They would deny Jesus. There are people that, you know, teach that Jesus, if he did exist, they, I mean, that's the way they would approach it. He was just a man, not the Son of God. And they teach these things. They deny the Lord, and they bring upon themselves swift destruction. The destruction will come quickly. So we have to watch for false teachers. And most of them, you know, they don't come in hollering and screaming and all that stuff. They try to do it as solely as they can to keep people from really understanding what they're doing until it's too late. Well, uh, Larry was saying that they don't come in yelling and screaming. They do this in a way that you know, it's quiet and subtle so you don't scare away. I'm certainly no expert tracker hunter or fisherman. But one thing you can't do whenever you want to catch an animal or fish, you can't do what? Make a lot of noise. You've got to be subtle and quiet. I'm sure you've seen, if not in person, certainly nature shows where a big cat will stalk an animal and it just sneaks. I, well, I've seen the cats in the yard sneak up on a bird. And they'll walk very slow just moving one paw at a time and they just barely move they can't make a lot of noise you might see the younger kittens they'll run right up to it and the bird will fly away and until they learn to sneak and that's the way that false teaching is they will come in being friendly and the such like and what we'll see as we progress in this study the way to know if they're false or not is obviously to compare it to what the word of god Look at, the, look at the pattern here to make sure that they're following. Stuart on the road told me just this past, a couple of weeks ago, he went into a congregation, a Church of Christ in Texas. He knew immediately they weren't following the pattern. He saw good tires and various things and things you don't read about in the ways that people worship in the Bible. 
even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The destruction will come swiftly. It may take a lifetime, but it will come and come swiftly. And here's the sad part. What's well, sad for them to be false teachers? And many shall follow their pernicious ways. That's a word that we just don't use in English much at all. Destructive is what that it means. If I look up the Greek word for pernicious ways, I did earlier, it simply means destruction, utter destruction. And so, many will follow their destructive ways. These are ways that lead you to everlasting destruction, and many are going to follow. I'm talking because or by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So these people are speaking evil about the way of truth. I see that today. That the way of truth is evil spoken of. It's denied. It's cast aside. It's covered up. And many will follow their destructive ways. Why would you follow a way that leads to destruction? Well, they don't know that it leads there. Because they are not paying attention to the word. Still talking about these false teachers that come in. That's something I always want you all to check me about. Is if I'm teaching the truth. I read right from the Bible, so it's hard not to teach the truth. But I could read something incorrectly. And I could have a totally wrong interpretation thereof. As we read last week. Was it last week we read? Yeah, just a few verses. Just back up to chapter 1. No prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. And so there is a way for it to properly be interpreted. And so we need to make sure that we study it. And I do pray often for wisdom to understand the word. To make sure I know what it says and supposed to say. I'm not all knowledge of the Bible. As a matter of fact, the more I study, the less I feel like I know. I may know more facts, but I learn more. It just is, uh, you know, it, it almost never ends. Well, it, do, it doesn't ever end. You always are learning something about the Bible. Verse 3. This is those teachers that come in. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, deceptive words, make merchandise of you. So they, a lot of people are coming in and uh, they exploit you, it says with deceptive words. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That's three words he's already used that's going to happen to them, or three terms. Swift destruction, judgment, and damnation is coming to false teachers. It's very important to teach the word correctly. If you look at the very first part, of James chapter th uh, 3, it warns teachers and preachers. Be not many masters, this was had to do with teaching, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. Really, judgment is the word there. Uh, that, I will look it up in other. New King James is, I think, pretty clear on it. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. And so, that's not saying to avoid becoming a teacher, but to realize the great responsibility that you have. Because you'll be judged harsher that, why didn't you teach this? Or you should have taught this. And, or you shouldn't have said that. And so it's very important that teachers teach correctly. It's not just public teachers, but talking to your family about the word, friends that you might be an influence over. Any comments on this through verse 3? So, they through covetousness, that is desiring something, they pull people away. A lot of false teachers do teach things for money. They'll even, you know, waffle on their teaching to not offend maybe big contributors or to hurt maybe their income. They won't hold to the truth. A lot of people want to hire preachers who will teach what they feel that they want to hear. 
It gives them a sense of comfort. And so they make merchandise of people. But judgment is not sleeping. Damnation is not sleeping. It's awake, and it is coming. Well, we know the congregation in Glasgow that it happened to. And, you know, and you wonder why people will sit back and, and take the preacher's word, even though, you know, it's something different from what they've grown up with. Well, you're right. Uh, Aaron sent a name of a well known preacher who's a very popular writer. You find his books in Walmart and everywhere. Max Licato, he's a member of the church. I say was. But he, last I knew, just totally gone off. Well, I know he has. I saw a video of him singing songs and piano, worship songs. But I actually, years ago, I wanted to just sort of make sure. I logged onto their website. And they said the elders had met, and they decided now that baptism was not necessary. And that was posted publicly on their website. I showed Ruby. Am I reading this correctly? And I was. And... You know, I've seen other preachers write and call his name and call for his repentance. But honestly, if he switched to the truth really firm with baptism and you can't just believe and you've got to, you know, deny this lifestyle, the massive crowds at their congregation would do what? They would dwindle to nothing nearly because people don't want to hear the truth. You can get the big crowds whenever you teach just feel good stuff. How much would a doctor do for you if he said, oh, you're fine, knowing that you have, I don't know many medical terms. I know doctor. I know nurse. That's, but I'm sure, Sandy, I'm actually asking, base, base of cell carcinoma, that's not a good cancer, is it? Probably not the worst. Melanoma, that'd be the worst skin cancer, yeah. If, if you had melanoma and really spreading and the doctor knew it and he said, oh, you're fine, it's just a mole. Don't worry at all about it. That would make you feel good. But guess what the cancer would still do? It would still kill you, that's right. And uh, a doctor's not doing you any favors, they're doing you an injustice. And he, and you know, I did call his name there, but you see his books everywhere. It's because he just writes feel-good books that uplift people. There's nothing wrong with being uplifted, but you also had to have some sour medicine and shots and things that hurt. So they're now denying baptism. Well, that was many years ago I saw that. And so they've gone to just a generic trust in the Lord's salvation, and people flock to that. And it is sad, and I hope they do repent. But the sad thing is, even if they do repent, they've led many astray They have already died, no doubt. They have to just by their numbers. And so, but a person needs to repent. And there's many others, uh, but he's probably one of the most, and I mentioned him because Aaron's in his name. He's such a well-known writer. And even their congregation doesn't say Church of Christ anymore, nor does the one in Glasgow. And that can still be a biblical name because the seven churches in Asia, it was just called the church at Laodicea, the church at Philadelphia, etc. But whenever I see people remove Christ's name from their building, I know they're doing it in a way that, you know, they're just becoming, trying to like everyone else. Now, he gives examples of how God does not spare sinners. Verse 4. He gives actually three examples here. He starts off with, I guess, the strongest of all. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, and Aaron is listening, she had to work or something today, and well, I guess, and couldn't attend, so she's able to listen, though. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into change of darkness to be reserved into judgment. This is all one long sentence, technically through, I'm looking through verse 10. So I'll just break it up. So we learn that God spared not the angels that sinned. So we learn that there were <coughs> angels that did sin. And they sinned 
and we're not told everything, but I think, you know, pride of the devil, then following him, they left their first habitation. So the angels were given a choice, and some chose to follow Satan. I can't imagine that. I don't know if they knew. I'm sure they'd been told what would happen, I feel like, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. But I'm sure they were warned. The Lord's just not going to let people or any being just go to destruction without some type of telling them, you know, the Lord's full of love. And so they had to have been warned. And hell wasn't even created. We're told that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It did not even exist. It was heaven only. And certainly a paradise. But he had to create a realm for those that actually left their first habitation. But he didn't spare them. For if God spared not the angels at sin, what happened to them? Cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. So they're bound with chains, obviously a metaphor, but they can't get out of where they're at. And it's a place of darkness. Hell is described as a place of outer darkness, no light whatsoever. Well, the rich man in Luke 16 saw Lazarus. He did. He at least let him see for a while or he saw him mentally. And, but it is a place of outer darkness to be reserved unto judgment. They're held there until the judgment. And the demons are bound. Satan walks about as a roaring lion, but he has limitations as well. And so it's like really a dog on a chain. They can pretty much do anything they want within the realm of their chain, but they're bound. And that's why Satan is. And, uh, of course, we're told in Revelation 20, the last time Satan's mentioned, that at the end he'll be cast down to hell where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the last time Satan is mentioned. And then, of course, uh, he's never mentioned again. That's, that's his fate. And then we switch to chapters 21 and 22 about heaven, but there are warnings there. So the angels were cast down to hell, delivered into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. We don't know how long this went on. It's hard to think of time out of this life because they obviously had existed and lived way before creation. I was reading one writer said, who knows, this might have gone on for what we would call millions of years. And then the Lord finally just did this. So he didn't spare the angels at sin. His point here is, if he didn't spare angels, he's not going to spare a false teacher. Verse 5. And spared not the old world. This is the world before the flood. But saved Noah, the eighth person. There were eight saved in the ark. Noah and his wife. They had three sons that made six and their wives. A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So he spared not the old world. Everybody that was alive, and all the land animals except for a few, were killed. They were drowned. It's interesting uh, to study about these things. Even scientists who don't believe in God know that there was a, some cataclysmic flood. But he didn't spare the old world, but he saved those that were righteous. Only eight of them. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow, making them an ensample, or we might say example, to those that, should, that after should live ungodly. So anybody that comes after Sodom and Gomorrah should look to them for an example. And of course, you know, their sin was, you know, the same gender sin. Uh, and all that stuff. Even sodomy is called after this sin. But they were so bad that they wanted to commit these sins with angels that were sent. Of course, they were struck with blindness and groped to find the door. And then the city was destroyed when Lot and his family left. Of course, his wife was killed. She looked back. They'd been commanded not to. It was turned into a pillar like a column of salt. And he and his two daughters made it to, I think, Zoar. I'll look that up. No, I think it was. Yeah. 
he had come to Zoar. The sun was risen up on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So he just rained fire upon them, made them ashes, totally burned them to the ground, and obviously the people therein. So he gives three examples here of we still uh, let's go ahead and finish about Sodom and Gomorrah it's a warning to those that would live ungodly afterwards and delivered just Lot so Lot was righteous vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked well we know what it means to be vexed with something just it, it bothers you all the time but with their filthy conduct in the King James Version, conversation didn't mean words. It meant your life. And he was vexed with their life. It was about him all the time. Don't you think you would get tired of certain things around you all the time that, you know, you just don't want to see? And I know the congregation here well enough that you would really be tired of living in a very sinful place after a while where you see it on every corner. Uh, you know, I've never lived in a place other than rural place. The largest city I've ever lived in, and it's probably for most of you all too, is, is Glasgow for a while. And it was much smaller, you know, I guess back then, obviously, than it is now. And But it was too much city for me, but it wasn't bad. It was back when Glasgow was dry and, and you know, no liquor there, and I think things were a little bit better. Alcohol really brings a lot of problems. And it does grieve me. I mentioned this, but some probably didn't hear it. Whenever I was going through Hodgenville the last time toward E-Town, I looked over and saw a building, and I caught myself literally say, oh, no, because it said on the side one word. What do you think? Liquor. I actually said, oh, no, because I didn't know LaRue County or Hodgenville had fallen, but it has. And it's just creeping in on us like some kind of plague or something, just getting closer to disease. And I don't think I could take living in San Francisco. San Francisco's a fine town. Ruby and I spend a little bit there. And as far as towns go, it's pretty. But it's very sinful, as any city's going to be. But the larger cities, uh, I've never been to Bangkok, Thailand, but... Uh, it is absolutely vexed with lasciviousness and sin. Uh, you know, it's just it's known for those things, the sins of the flesh. Erin makes a good point. She says, some get tired, but many become numb and adapt to the lifestyle of the day. And she's right. That's what you have to be careful. You can become numb to it and just accept it. Whenever you feel it's bothering you, you need to get away and get out. Don't become acceptive and, you know, out. It's like, you know, your hands, your fingers can be very sensitive, but you do enough work with, say, an axe and hammer and things like that, what's going to happen to your fingertips or hands? They become what? Calloused. Calloused. And you don't feel it anymore. I've never done a lot of manual labor. I remember the last day I hauled in hay. And I hauled in a lot of hay in high school. But probably di during college, I developed calluses on my hands in one place that probably a lot of people don't. What do you think? My fingertips, because I typed so much. I, I was actually typing for other people and made a little bit of uh, income, which I'm thankful for. But I would type all the time. I had a manual. No, I didn't. By then, I had an electric typewriter. And uh, I typed so much, I actually developed calluses on my fingers. And, you know, you become callous, you can't feel anymore. We use that as a metaphor. They just don't care. They've become so calloused. Well, calluses can protect you, but they also can harm you because you don't feel the danger. And so, just Lot was delivered. He was vexed with their filthy conversation. It was about him all the time. He just couldn't take it. Well, he was staying there till the Lord had him leave. So we've got to get away from sin. It can be in your own family. But let's, a little bit more on Lot. For that righteous man dwelling among them 
and seeing and hearing. When you see and hear sin all the time, we had to be careful. Ruby and I were talking, I guess, coming from the hospital that's uh, the other day, that nowadays it's so much easier to be exposed to sin because of the internet, and it is. When I was growing up, there was TV and movies, but never went to hardly any movies. I don't even know. I, prob- I literally can count on one hand probably how many movies I saw, you know, through high school. Wasn't many at all. So I never did that. And, you know, television was a lot more decent, and and it was. Things have changed. But seeing and hearing sin, whether in person or via media, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And so just day by day, this was upon him. You know, getting worse and worse. The Lord decided to destroy the city. So much here about what we can do. We have to get out. There's a saying in Westerns, probably more on gun smoke. You better get out of Dodge or town. Yeah, get out of Dodge. Just get away from it. Verse 8 continues. But really, uh, it sort of wraps it up, but it's still talking about Lot. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So if you're righteous or godly, it says here, the Lord knows how to deliver you. There is a delivery for everything. There is a way of escape. As a matter of fact, I would probably do well to look to to that verse. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. Every temptation you face, someone else has faced it. But God is faithful, who will not suffer, not let you to be tempted above that which you are able. He will put a limit on the temptation of what you can handle. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. So every temptation has a way of escape. And he will limit it to what that you can bear. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust, the sinners, until the day of judgment to be punished. So the judgment is coming where we'll stand before God and give an account of the things done in the flesh. I mean, if we die, you know, we're we're going to know if we're lost or saved because as soon as we die, Luke 16 is clear on that. The rich man who was a sinner, in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments. It was immediate. But Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And, of course, Jesus on the cross to the thief, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So we learn that the lost, when they die, they're immediately in torments. Still the judgment to come, though. And then the righteous go to be with the Lord in paradise when they die. Because it was that day. And so, I mean, there's no comparison which one we want. But we need to stay away from temptation. Are there any questions or comments? I may not go any further, really, because I don't, I'm not saying it really shifts here. It continues on. He talks about how angels don't even speak against dignities and uh, the things that they say. People that presumptuous self-will, they speak about things they don't know. I'm certainly talking about spiritual things here. But people that are loud and boisterous and very opinionated, they're going to lose their soul. It's not wrong to have an opinion, but I'd be very careful about it. I've heard people say, well, I'm very opinionated. The only opinions I ever have is what's in the Bible. Oh, I might have an opinion on, do I prefer tropical 75, 80 degree weather or Arctic and about 20 below zero? Well, of course I like the warm. But you know what I mean on controversial and biblical things. People are very outspoken about the Bible and against it. And I see it getting more and more freely. Even today on the Super Bowl, 
Fox denied a commercial to be run because it was anti-abortion. Abortion. It was about abortion survivors. I guess they mean children that were going to be aborted. I don't know. But Fox wouldn't let it run. But they're going to freely let run a commercial that has two, well, queens that dress differently. So they're going to allow that. And so I was reading that. I'm, uh, things are getting worse. But the Lord's going to reserve them unto judgment. We need to try to teach. But people get so far they don't want to hear. Uh, look at the, the men at, in Sodom. They were so vexed with that lifestyle that even after struck with blindness, they were feeling for the door. They even asked for the angels to be used in their sins. Lot offered, can you imagine? Lot had all gotten so low with this vexation. He offered his daughters to these men. Here, take them. Just like a sacrifice to them. But they would not. They wanted the angels. It, it, it was horrible. And so our world is quickly going there. Are there any questions or comments? I think it's done there. It's just maybe here we don't see sometimes quite as much as we could other places. Y'all been good in class today. <laughs> quiet. Ben, are they this quiet where you've been teaching? No. No. Ben's teaching uh, school. Well, he's, su he's not subbing. He's student teaching. This is his last semester, and he'll teach regular in the fall, so when he gets a job, but I'm sure he will because there's a shortage of teachers. And so. Well, we'll stop there, and we will pick up next week. I'm just going to color this because that lets me know where we've gone to. I can go back on YouTube and easily find where we went. For those listening online, we will pick back up at the top of the hour.
It is 10 o'clock. It's good to have everyone here this morning. The crowds, I start to say a little light, probably about medium. It's good to have everyone here. Um, keep in mind our sick. I think starting next week, I'm going to put up just on the uh, bulletin or on the screen here a list of our sick because we're getting so many to announce. It'd be good just to have just a like a prayer list I can put up here. If anybody doesn't want to be on it, let me know because it will be on YouTube, but not many people will see it. And also, it's uh, the bulletins are all posted, you know, with everybody's name. So I won't put any details like your address or a map to your house or your phone number, but we'll just put a list of our sick and, uh, you know, maybe like if someone has cancer or if they're going to have surgery or whatever we feel, you know, you feel is good public information. And that way we can keep a list. I can put it up here at halftime, <laughs> and people can look at it, and it'll help to serve as a reminder. So I think next week I'm going to start doing, doing that because we're, we're getting so many that ask for prayers, which is good, but it's hard to remember them all whenever you're going by memory. So it'll be good to have a list up there. And uh, I know a lot of places do that. We'll just have people like are shut in at home, and then those who are sick, you know, with something out of the ordinary and then those maybe in nursing homes or hospitals and so i you know i was thinking about this the other day we live in a very rural conservative area and how things have changed there's so much privacy now with that what they call that is that a hippo law and stuff hippo law or whatever it is and uh but do you remember i'm sure people who grew up around here sandy does sandy and i are the same age i can't let her forget that and uh I'm sure uh, Carrie remembers in Hart County and Vicki, but when you would listen to WLOC in the mornings, do you remember what they would have? They would have all dismissals and admissions to the hospital. They would call the names and the people who had been admitted to the hospital. Ruby, what's that? They did that in Arkansas. I listen to Arkansas News every morning. That's one thing I listen to from 7 to about 7.30. I always play Bible readings, but at that time I like to listen to, I play their local news in Arkansas. And it's such a rural area. Uh, it really is a country area. Other day they announced that Highway 62 was going to be closed down to Gerald King's place. <laughs> and that's the way they announced it, you know, on the radio. And so I thought, that is so rural. I love that kind of radio. And I love listening to them in the morning. And so I guess it got open down at Gerald's place later on that day. But uh, anyway, they used to actually publicly announce on radio the admissions. And I know with laws and things, they had to stop doing that. But uh, that just popped my mind the other day how things have indeed changed. Continue to remember our sick, but I'll have a list next week. Aaron comment, prayer list is nice also as a reference when doing our individual prayers, and it is. And I won't put personal information if there's anything you don't want on there for sure. And Ruby said, we actually got a little tickled with this the other day. I said, well, if somebody doesn't want their name, we could use code names. I said, uh, we could put up there, Bettel Cesar is sick. And she said, yeah, that could be Aaron. I said, well, that was Daniel's name. And, and she said, well, you could be Methuselah. Thanks, Ruby. And... <laughs> And then I suggested, well, maybe I, should, I think Larry might be our oldest man here. And so, uh, but we could do, uh, what's, Earl is. Uh, so, 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 sorry about that. No, Earl is. And so, sorry about that, Earl and Larry. But we got, we got tickled trying to establish Bible names to many of the members here. And so you think of your own Bible name. But we will probably do that. I, a few people comment. I wore a different tie today. I wore a really, it's a yellow tie and a different shirt, but a yellow tie. It was so bright and sunshiny. Ruby come in and she said, I really like that tie. She says it's like sunshine. I said, I wore it today to see if the groundhog would see it. <laughs> and so that was my purpose. Wore it outside and I don't think the groundhog did. But probably did see a shadow today. But it's good to have everyone here. Continue to remember our sick. Mom still in rehab. Hasn't had a good last couple of days. Been very, very weak. She's so scheduled to be dismissed Wednesday, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I just I hope she is, but I don't think she's well enough to come home yet. She's eligible to stay another 80 days. And that's enough time to go around the world, if you know the reference I'm making there. And uh, so do keep her in prayer that she can get stronger and be home. 
uh, back with us soon. Continuing member Shirley, uh, who hasn't been able to be with us uh, in some time. We really miss her as well. Both our Shirleys have been taken out of our number. Uh, keep Vicki in mind. She goes for a procedure called an EMG. Did I get it right? Not how many times I typed it wrong yesterday. She goes for the EMG on Wednesday on both arms. She said it's a very painful procedure. She's had it before. As you saw from the bulletin, that they very possibly had to remove a plate from her neck and put a new one in. So she'll be down for a while if they have to do that, I would think. And so she said she was dreading it, and I don't, I don't blame her at all. Anything is painful. Uh, continue to remember, of course, I put in the bulletin Archie and Judy Manning. Archie Manning's the one that's suffering really badly with cancer. He's a, a acquaintance of uh, Sharon because she carries their granddaughter on the school bus. and. We've helped them before uh, financially around Christmas, and they were very grateful and came here to publicly give thanks to us. And so keep them in prayer. Uh, Aaron as well, that she'll remain pain-free. Continue to remember Alice. She suffers all the time with pain and just basically cannot walk, and she's just almost wheelchair-bound. Uh, Brad Terry as well with his cancer. Try, my, that's why I need a prayer list myself. I can't remember everyone. Remember Ruby's parents? I think they're doing pretty good. Her dad just turned 86 yesterday. They still live out on the farm by themselves, but it gets harder each passing year, of course. Steve Seaton. Steve Seaton. Uh, he uh, lives at Horse Cave, but he attends here uh, periodically uh, when he's able to, and he uh, has some issues and also has diabetes. So thank you, Sherry, for reminding me of that. Is there anyone else? Well, I remember Stuart as he's on the road. I sent him a link. I don't know if he's listening this morning or not. Took a little bit of time, but Larry will be leading us in singing this morning, and so we'll turn it over to him. Our first song this morning will be number 385. 385. <clears throat> No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join that happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where there's a spend an endless day. Sorrow can dismay. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Some more. We'll cease to ponder or things as life has brought to view. All will be clearer, save ones be dearer. In heaven, where all will be made new. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. <clears throat> Our song before the prayer and the reading this morning will be numbered. 342 will sing the first and last stanza of 342 
after singing this song, Carrie will have the prayer, and uh, uh, Ben will have the reading. <clears throat> Number 342. <clears throat> Trouble sometimes are here, really miss hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold it, now's that stay. Calling your heart to God, let the chastening rot. Seek the way pilgrims trot, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet the doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous need in the sky. Everywhere no one dies, heavenward bound. Throws will soon be your happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, down in this world goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one dies. Every word bound. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this day. We thank thee that we can come together to sing these songs. And Lord, we know Jesus someday will ride the cloud to come back, and that will be soon. For each and every one of us, the day of judgment also will be soon. Life is short, and Father, we ask this morning that we take each and every opportunity of the numbers of days that we have left in our life to make the right choices, to tell friends, neighbors, relatives about the hope of Jesus, about the hope of eternal life. That if we, Father, focus upon the cross in you and through Jesus Christ, the hope of eternal life and salvation someday. Father, this morning there's a number of those within this congregation that are ill and sick. There's a number of those outside this congregation, Father, who are friends and members here. Father, there's a number this morning for ways and means and electronic outreach that they too may not be well. We ask you too, Father, if you can, just restore each and every one's health as only thou knowest best. For those individuals and their families and their loved ones, and too, Father, that they may have the measure of health that they can run, return back here a month ago with the social that we, we enjoy so much with brothers and sisters here in Christ. We thank thee for Brother Marty. We thank thee as he labors here and the lessons he brings and prepares to bring to us and also in our outreach ministry, Father, that we may reach just that one person. That Brother Marty might say that one thing upon his lips that that individual might return to you or might come to you and have the same hope, Father, that we have here with each other. We thank thee so much for Jesus Christ, the ultimate love, the example that we should look up to, the unbounding, the undying love that he gave to <coughs> everyone here in that particular hope, Father, the one that we have. Father, this morning, those that might be visiting with us and those electronically that might be visiting with us, we thank thee, Father, that they've had the opportunity to either tune in here or stop by here, that we're uplifted, Father, by the association that we have with them, 
that they're always welcome here. And if they have a need to call upon the church, it's our duty, Father, to take care of those needs, to try to help them along the bumpy path in life. The same fathers that we'll see individuals this week that we'll talk to, life is so uncertain, life is not easy. Everyone, Father, we know has problems. And Father, we know that when we're down the most, that's when we need to look up the most, but only to you, that you are the great physician, you are the caretaker. You are the divine healer. Please help us through those times. Father, this morning we thank thee for all of our armed forces that stand guard on all four corners of this world that provide us the opportunity and the freedoms of this country to come here. We especially, Father, thank those that have gone before them, those that were injured, and those that give to their ultimate life and their sacrifice for each and every one. We pray and thank so much for those. Father, this morning in this world, there's so much turmoil, there's so much pain, suffering, that Father, we ask for the rulers of the nations that you look down upon them, that they can make decisions, especially here, Father, in the great country that we live, is that if everyone can focus, Father, upon you, life would be so much better. Father, we ask thee to go on through this service. We're very weak and we're very sinful. And of all those sins, Father, this morning we bind them together. We lay them before you, Father, and we ask for forgiveness of those sins. And all these things in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Today's reading will be from Luke 24, verses 33 and 34. And when they come to that place called Calvary, where they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the other left, <coughs> then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Number 119, 119. <clears throat> We're saying the first, second, and last stanza, 119. <clears throat> Tempted and tried, we're all made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sun. We'll understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken their loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked? Year after year, farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by 
by and by. Farther along we'll know all about it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. <coughs> if you would like to <coughs> uh, mark the song of invitation, it'll be number 361. There's a great day coming. 361. There's a great day coming. <coughs> song before the lesson we number 298 <clears throat> 298 we'll sing the first last stanza if you would like to stand you may number 298 <clears throat> the first and the last I once was lost in sin but Jesus took me in and then the light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have, have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell, tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer for yearning. Heart unto heaven is turning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer for yearning. Heart unto heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Everybody get a bulletin. If you didn't, now there's a few. I remember. Bring to the back. Here. Print up a few extra because we're taking some to sick and shut in. If you uh, regularly visit a place, uh, take them and <coughs> maybe leave them with the patient that you're visiting and uh, maybe help others, give them some contact information. Mom is listening right now on the phone, and so... I'm glad she feels good enough to listen this morning. Of course, we'll be going down afterwards. And then back by 4 o'clock, don't forget that being first Sunday is our singing tonight. So we probably won't learn any new songs the way we did last week uh, or last month. But keep that in mind that tonight is, is singing night. And hope everybody can be back by 4. We've only got, I think, after tonight, four more services at 4 p.m. And... Um, then we'll be going back It'll be a time change it's hard to believe it's already that time of year the uh days are, are getting it, it's warmer already they're calling i think ruby's parents are supposed to be 72 days 60s for us i was at the hospital and ruby took a picture when she went out to get the mail and sent it to me this was taken i think the 29th maybe 30th of january and uh look if you will mark's lily's already up uh or daffodils as some call them Coming in, sort of, I like that contrast, the brown and gray of the uh, older foliage with the green and yellow. Of course, they hadn't bloomed yet. And you know, of course, they'll get bit back. There'll be a snow on them. But uh, I don't think I've ever seen them out that far in January uh, before. It's good to have each one, those who are listening online and those who are listening in the future. Uh, since these are recorded, I'm always keenly aware of uh, that people may be listening elsewhere and listening later on try to always speak the truth uh, in simplicity and purity uh, so people 
uh, can understand the truth and they can see literally uh, the recordings of us teaching the Bible. If you will, turn to Luke chapter 13. I want to just go over a, a few verses this morning. I want... I saw something on the news this past week, and of course y'all did too. It was about the death of Kobe Bryant. It was on the Weather Channel. It said, fans shocked at the death of Kobe Bryant. And then I saw an even broader statement on the Weather Channel, because they were talking about weather possibly playing a part in that helicopter crash. It said, world shocked at death of Kobe Bryant. Well, honestly, I probably a lot never heard it, you know, in deepest Africa and various places, but might have. That's not the point I'm making. And whenever they said that fans in the world were shocked, I actually thought, why? Why be shocked? He was born in 1978, the year we graduated from high school, right, Sandy? He was born in 78. They knew the day that he was born, he was going to what? Die. Why be shocked? What they meant was they were shocked the way he died, when he died. They, whoever they is, the collective world, his family, he himself probably expected to live to be 80 or 90, die peacefully in a retirement home or surrounded in his own home by family and friends. What they meant when the world was shocked was how and when. I'm not shocked when anyone dies. Oh, you get the news and it takes you back for a bit and it's all the news for a few days. Why be shocked at anyone's death? It's going to happen to everybody. Uh, one verse I'll look at before I get to this. It's appointed unto men once to die after this, what? The judgment. Hebrews 9.27 And I've got a calendar on my phone. Y'all do too. If you have an iPhone, you know, and subscribe to the church calendar, you'll look. What, well, 4 o'clock, Ezra 3 1, which is wrong. It's singing night, isn't it? I need to correct that. I'll move that to next week. Actually, Mom reminded me it was singing night. I've got scheduled for Wednesday, Isaiah 15 that night. Oh, and I need to actually announce this for Thursday. I've got scheduled at 7 p.m., Ladies Online Bible Class. It's going to be two weeks in a row to get back on track. If you haven't joined in, she's back using. Uh, Facebook Messenger, and the, all the technical issues are worked out. It's as smooth as can be and sounds great. And my whole point was I have a calendar of events. I may or may not keep some of them because things come up. I don't have a very heavy schedule. Just church things is mainly it. But I have one. It's not on my calendar, though. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Even if I could put it on my calendar, I don't think I want to see it. The Lord didn't let us know when we're going to die, and I'm thankful. We live open-endedly. Why be shocked when someone dies? It's because of how they died, and you got the news that it finally happened to them. There'll be someone that dies this week that's probably well-known or semi-well-known or maybe very well-known. It happens to men and women all the time. I've mentioned this before, but if you Google the statistics of how many people die a day, it works out to about one a second. So since I've been saying this sentence, five or six people have died. During that pause, about five did. On the average, and probably did, maybe more. Who were they? Where were they? Was it an accident? Was it old age? I've mentioned this numerous times. I'm sure some here haven't heard. It's been a while now, a few years. I saw a news story about the last survivor of the Spanish-American War. He had died. He was 112. And at the end of the story, they said the cause of death was not listed. I know the cause of death. 112. You know, that's simply that. We're all going to die, but we still get shocked at deaths. If you hear that some superstars died, you're going to be surprised. You'll tweet the news. You'll post on Facebook. Matter of fact, you know how I first found out about it? Ruby talked about Kobe Bryant. Ruby told me. You know how she found out about it? From Vicki. 
Vicky put rest in peace Kobe or something to that effect. And so I don't know many people named Kobe. And so Ruby looked at it and showed it to me. And because people were surprised. Not he died, they had been scheduled, appointed since 1978. But it was how he died and being well known and a tragic sudden death of a total of nine people, I think is what the final count was. And I've flown on a helicopter once. Trust me, that was enough for me. And uh, I was actually on a military helicopter doing maneuvers. What kind of maneuvers? You weren't in the military. No, I wasn't. But, it's, of course, Ruby is too, and Carrie well knows I do a lot of ham radio stuff, and we were doing some uh, emergency uh, drills for earthquake preparedness, and they flew us in a Black Hawk helicopter. Open sides, flying sideways where I could see the ground because they would do big banking maneuvers. I thought, if I ever get back on the ground. I was a little bit bigger back then, uh, too big, too big now, I guess. But I was bigger back then. I couldn't hardly get strapped into the Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> and I said, there's not enough seat belts. Someone said, no, there's too much Marty. Now, that was it for me. <laughs> Let me off this Black Hawk here. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we were flying down to Rampaduca to do some stuff. And it took a while. They were doing maneuvers. They'd fly sideways. I felt like it. I could see ground anyway because it was open. It was a military helicopter. I was just about sick, literally. Then I heard the pilot say, we probably need to get back to the airport. We're really running low on fuel. That was enough for me. That was my first and last time in a helicopter. I would again if I needed to or asked to do something like that. It was an adventure, I have to admit. But... Y'all would be shocked if I died, not because it's been scheduled since 1960, but you'll still be surprised just to find, get the news that it finally happened. It's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. The people of Jesus' day and time were no different. Look at just a few verses in Luke 13. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So there were some... People from Galilee, presumably Jews, making the sacrifices. Pilate had killed them, seemingly, and mingled their blood with their sacrifices. Just like out of spite, out of meanness. Well, you're going to offer sacrifice. How about some of your blood with it? It was a very terrible thing. They, they were killed or executed in this horrible manner. And they told Jesus about it. And, of course, he knew all. But I can see they said, did you hear we do that all the time. Did you hear what happened? No. What was it? And they were eager to tell Jesus. I think we want to share bad, bad news because it helps us to bear the burden, to hear other people's thoughts on it. And it's just part of us. It was part of them. They wanted to tell Jesus about Pilate having done this to the Galileans. And so Jesus obviously already knew, but he said, <laughs> Jesus and Jesus answering said to them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? Obviously, some of them thought, well, they must have been terrible sinners to let this happen. He said they weren't different from anyone else. Stuff just happens to people. Good Christians get killed. Good Christians get executed. Uh, people who teach the Word, two things that you may not be familiar with. I get a lot of emails because, I guess, of our email online, people send me emails, uh, and some of it I really enjoy. I get some newsletters from various church groups. One is just, I think, generic Christian group. But last, last month now, well, it doesn't take long to be last month, does it? There was a, quote, Christian, I don't really know anything about him, preacher kidnapped in Central Africa. He was African himself. But he was preaching Christianity and the Bible to villages, uh, a group kidnapped him. Who's that man that does all that? Boko Harlem or something like that? Do y'all know who I'm talking about? He's a real rebellious, Carrie knows of him, real rebellious leader in that area. He kidnapped him and made him do a video that, well, my kidnappers are treating me good. And last week the news came out that they had tried to get him to deny Christ. He would not. What do you think they did to him? They did kill him. What way do you think? A way that they did in the Bible all the time is guaranteed to know someone's dead. They beheaded him because he went to deny Christ. He was a Christian, quote, I don't know, but I just know that he was teaching the Bible and trying to teach people about Christ. And they beheaded him. And I saw news of that, and that sort of bothered me. I hadn't told anybody yet. Uh, but, you know, time goes on. 
And it would be hard to go to Africa. It'd be very hard to go to the Middle East and preach right now because there are, are a lot of beheadings and a lot of executions. Um, you know, things are happening. As I've told you before, I know preachers. A uh, preacher uh, knew his dad well and holding a gospel meeting in Cambodia. When he left, many of the people attending were actually held in prison for a year for going to church there in Cambodia. Cambodia, uh, very, I think maybe Laos. But either one's a very dangerous place. I don't know the fate of any of those. But just this week, uh, I saw this, and I thought it'd be worth mentioning. Uh, Franklin Graham, who's Billy Graham's son, he was going to hold uh, like a campaign-type tour in England, eight days speaking at different cities, you know, teaching, and he wanted to preach. And... The venue in Birmingham, England, canceled it. They said he couldn't come now because one group said that he was teaching against same-gender lifestyles, and so they didn't want him there. Well, it was one of some LGBTQ group. I don't know how to They're going to get to the point I don't have to use all 26 alphabets to even describe them. But, and so they canceled it because he, was, he said, yes, you know, the Bible says that lifestyle is a sin. He said, we're not preaching hate. We're preaching love to try to save souls. But they canceled his tour because preaching against that lifestyle. And I, I just thought that was interesting. That came through some email I got. And so how long is it going to be before, and I think it will happen, before YouTube won't let me broadcast because I teach against that lifestyle. They have robotic software that scans everything you say and listens to it and compares it. And if they don't like it. Uh, it was even Ben telling me, YouTube won't let you post how to dress a deer now uh, because it's too graphic. And so that's how the world's getting. As a matter of fact, Ruby saw this week, one group was written, PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, was complaining because on Groundhog Day there in Pennsylvania, they bring out Puxatani Phil, a real groundhog, and let him see a shadow. They said they were making a petition to make it a a mechanical groundhog that they brought out. <laughs> that has gone too far. You can't even hold a groundhog up. We want it to be a mechanical one. But anyway, eventually YouTube will probably deny our rights to broadcast. And we'll still be able to directly, but probably not on YouTube. I get copyright notices from them. I used to all the time. Every time we sung Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I'd get a copyright notice. Uh, not a strike. There's a big difference. A strike, three strikes and... They pull your channel. It's a notice that if we are making money from that song that goes to the copyright holder, that suits me fine. They deserve it. They wrote it. And so I used to get those all the time. And I still do every once in a while on other things, and I haven't on church in a while. <laughs> they probably looked at our viewers and say, let it go. No one's watching. <laughs> but uh, I do expect that sometime. And so it's interesting when preachers of today and speakers are denied venues and having things canceled. Are you going to speak about this same gender lifestyle? Of course I am. You can't come then. It's happening. And so things are getting worse and worse in the world. And I, that, that was a little bit of digression, but I want to tell you all the things I'd read this past week. Do you think they were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? Well, no, they were not. Things just happened. I tell you, nay or no, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That should be our reaction when we hear bad news. I need to make sure I'm living right or I'm going to likewise perish. It doesn't mean in a helicopter crash or a beheading, but that you die out of the Lord. That's what he's talking about here, that you would perish. And he doesn't talk about their situation, but he says they weren't sinners above anyone else. All are sinners. Unless you repent, you'll likewise perish. So he turned this back to them. They were talking about how terrible the news was, and he said, you're going to end up just the same way. I've told Ruby often, I don't want to do anything where I make the evening news. I don't want to be part of it. And so um, I want to live a right life if something does happen know that I'm saved. And Jesus, I'll jump ahead, repeats these exact same words two verses later. But look at verse 4. He tells them a new story. 
or those 18, they didn't mention this, upon whom the tower in Siloam fell. I was reading this chapter this morning. I'd been planning this chapter for a few days, but I was reading it this morning, and I, it hit me that he mentions this. I wonder how many of them had not heard of this event. I can see their whisper. Did you know about that? No, I hadn't even heard it yet. And so 18 were killed. What happened to them? A tower fell. I was, uh, you can find anything on the internet. The other day, I, just out of the blue, well, Ruby and I, we were passed or something by a log truck. I'm passed by everything. They blow me off the road going down. See, Mom, I was driving. Ruby was riding, which she usually drives, but I got in the vehicle first and went outside, and I was reading, so she just got in. I drove. I said, look at all the people passing me. She looked over. She said, you're doing 40. She said, that's only five more than you're supposed to do, and you know. <laughs> and so uh, I guess that's why they were passing. And so, but I had to, I, you'll get a kick out of this. Actually, coming back, she drove, and I fell asleep, and I was dreaming. I told her, I said, well, you're doing 500 down this road. And I dreamed that she was driving 500 on 31E. So that's why I do 40, I guess. But she wasn't. She was doing about 50. But I asked Ruby, I said, I wonder how much a tree weighs. I said, oh, I'd guess your average tree would weigh probably about two tons. I looked it up, and I was actually pretty close. Your average size, this oak tree you see, it's about one and a half to three tons. Uh, you know, bigger trees, more. The reason I was, I was reading something about trees and I thought, you know, no wonder people die when a tree falls on them. Many tons just crushes them. That's what happened here. Eighteen people, a tower fell. I don't know if they were working on it or just spectators below. I don't know how tall the tower was. But it wasn't situated well, and it fell, and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? So they were not sinners. An accident happened. You might die in an accident. You've heard me here pray enough that I pray that we don't die in an accident that will peacefully fall asleep to this life. But he does give warning of this event. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So I would take the lesson from this. Anytime you hear a bad news story, nation shocked, you know, at death of superstar or whatever, or political, or ball player, or you see some event like that that happens. How should you react to the news? Let Jesus tell you, except you repent, you'll likewise perish. And what one of us doesn't need to repent? I mean, we may be living for the Lord, but we all fall short of the glory of God. And so Aaron's uh, having to work at home today, so she's able to look up things. Uh, some expert, there's an actual, uh, some ruins there at Siloam, and uh, like maybe where a tower that had collapsed. And so about 18 feet across of, of a ruin there where Siloam is. So that is very interesting. But whenever you hear of a tragic event, you'll hear of something this week. It'll be some body that's died locally in the obituaries. It could be a star. It could be a well-known person uh, in sports. It'll be somebody that has died. Next time you're a little shocked at a death, I hope that you will tell this phrase to yourself, except I repent, I likewise will perish. Not in the same way, but meet the fate if they weren't living in the Lord that they would meet. That's the warning to them. They were telling Jesus about news. He told them about news. But the lesson from both of them was, you live for the Lord or you'll die in the same way. That's what we need to take from this. In a moment, we're going to sing the song, There's a Great Day Coming. This song's talking about the day of judgment, where we'll all stand before the judgment seat of God and be judged by the things done in the flesh. As we just read from Hebrews at the beginning of the lesson, you have an appointment. Once to die, and after this, the judgment. Will you be prepared? How will we die? It's not how will we die, it's where will we die. Not on earth, but in or out of the Lord. Make sure you die in the Lord. If you're here and need to obey the Lord in baptism, certainly as he said there, repent of your sins. We need to confess him, his name, uh, believe on him, of course, but to be baptized, to wash away our sins, or to come back to the Lord in repentance and prayer. Except we repent, we'll likewise perish. 
we're so fortunate because we're here, we have life, we have the ability to obey. Don't squander this opportunity because there is a great day coming as we stand and sing. There's a great day coming, a great day coming, there's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parting right and left, are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Coming by and by, when the sinner shall hear his sin depart, I know ye not. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Number 360. Number 360. Oh, I'm sorry, it's wrong. One. 105. for Lord's Supper. <coughs> when we meet in sweet communion, where the feast divine is spread, hearts are brought in closer union, while partaking of the bread.
fruit of the vine because it's the blood of Christ. Please partake the in a worthy manner and see the coast and we pray. Amen. Bow your heads. Dear Lord, we come to you in prayer to ask you to bless this time that we take two times a week, well, one time a week, that we continue to have it and that we take this time to get back to you. In the Lord's name, amen. Larry's going to lead us in a closing song. Well, that's John visiting with us to dismiss us in prayer. Don't forget our services at 4. We'll be having singing. Uh, Stuart is listening. He texted me, and so I'm glad he was able to listen in today on the road. Uh, I believe that was Stuart's first public prayer. It was. And that and uh, it was a wonderful prayer. It was absolutely perfect. And uh, I got to thinking, how does Stuart know what to say at the Lord's Supper? We've never had a class. We've never had training. I've never had a lesson on it. How do you think he knows what to say? He's been here and heard it. Come all the time. That's how you learn. <clears throat> Bring them. Make sure they're here. And Taylor, it's good to see the young men because I know I'm going the way of all the world. And so who's going to be doing things here at Munkerville in 20 years? And taking care of old preachers that can't already get, get it in. And in 40 years when they're gone, you know, the church here will continue. And I think it will grow and thrive. This is not a pat on the back, but we used to be so small. I, and and they, they've had a lot of deaths. You know? But do you know we're as big as Horse Cave now? They're only running about 35 people, and, uh, they told me. So, and, you know, I, I hate that they digress, but we have increased, and, uh, you know, hopefully they'll grow back. <coughs> they've had a lot of uh, deaths and, deaths and, and people have gone elsewhere. But Mumfordville here has really grown, and I see it in our young people. But anyway, I digress a little. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? If not, let us stand. Seven, <coughs> seven twenty-eight B. Seven twenty-eight B. We'll sing the first stanza. <coughs> there is beyond the azure blue. The God concealed from human sight, He tinted sky with heavenly hue, and framed the worlds with His great might. There is a God, He is alive, in Him we live and we survive. Oh, no, no, no. 
God created man in his own God the great I am I'm a gracious and loving Heavenly Father we thank you for this day and it's many blessings to provide us with thank you for allowing us this time to come study another fourth year word and worship you please to be your will allow us to take that lesson and apply it to our lives and spread it throughout the rest of this week please be with those that were mentioned that are sick This sickness and, and the injuries that they've obtained, please, Lord, to be your will, watch over us all as we leave this place and keep us safe. Give us of our sins in your son's heavenly name. Amen. <laughs>
years, Linda. Thank you. 